In this video, I'll rig the mouth for this character. Since he's a flat rig and built with separate pieces, then replacement shapes will work well for his mouth. So I'll go over how we can use replacement shapes, but also how we can create a rig for each mouth so it can be reshaped and animated. To start with, I determined what mouth shapes I wanted to get out of the character. And based on an animation test I had planned out, these are the mouth shapes that I'll need. The closed mouth is a single polygon, just like the model that I used for the eyebrows. For the open mouth, I'll use a duplicate of the closed mouth and use it for the top lip and another one for the bottom lip, and then create a separate polygon for the inside of the mouth. These circular shapes are modeled from a polygonal sphere that was cut in half and flattened, and then separated to create the lip and the inside of the mouth. The shape on the right uses the same geometry as the open mouth smile, and the last piece is a polygon made from triangles that can be used for the mouth corner. In the past, I've built the mouth with one piece and then used a darker shader for the faces on the inside of the mouth, and with enough depth that the tongue could fit behind the lips. Using this one piece eliminates the possibility of the lips and the inner mouth tearing away from each other. But for this character, I like the control that I'm getting from having the separate pieces. So I made sure that the geometry of the lips and the inner mouth have the same number of rows so that they don't separate once they're rigged. Now, if we wanted to, we could create a library of replacement shapes, model all the in-between poses, and then just animate their visibility. For example, to animate from a neutral closed mouth to a smile, then we could have these shapes. Then swap to a mouth that has a lower lip and an inner mouth geometry for the open mouth smile. And we could modify the open mouth to create in-betweens towards a surprised mouth, switching to the circular geometry halfway to that surprised mouth expression. Then remodel that shape to get a small circular shape that we could use for oohs and w's. To create some of these shapes, we could even use a blend shape deformer, dial in the percentage of the blend shape, and then duplicate that geometry to generate in-between shapes. I quickly modeled these shapes just as an example, but this is a valid approach. There are plenty of 2D shows and stop motion productions that use this technique for facial animation. Instead of creating a full library for this character, I'll just create a few replacement mouths with their own animation rigs. Since I know that these are the shapes that I want for my animation test, then I could rig this geometry, but I can build in more flexibility if I rig less pose-centric and more neutral shapes and then use the animation controls to create these poses. So this geometry will give us the closed mouth shapes. And as weird as this looks, this will give us the open mouth smile and the frown expressions. And the circular pieces will work for these expressions. And even though the corner of the mouth will always be a crescent shaped, this geometry will give us more control over its shape. I'll start with the simple closed mouth shape. And instead of using a joint chain, I'll create a single joint, duplicate it, and place them along the rows of the polygon. Then I'll use NURB circles as animation controls and snap them to the joints. Then create a group control for these controls and move its pivot to the corner of the mouth. Now I'll set up the hierarchy and make the joints a child of the corresponding animation curves and the curves a child of the group control. To bind the geometry, I'll select all the joints, then shift select the mouth geometry and go to skin, bind skin. I'll use selected joints as the binding method and hit bind skin. Now the closed mouth is rigged and can be posed to get the smile shape that I want as well as a closed mouth frown. To create the crescent shape for the corner of the mouth, I'll use the same techniques. As a side note, I'm making sure to freeze transforms before I bind the geometry. This will avoid scaling issues within hierarchies and allow me to zero out the controls to get the mouth shapes back to their neutral poses. Now I'll move on to the open mouth shape. The lip geometry is the same as the closed mouth, so I can duplicate that setup and use it for the top lip and another for the bottom lip. I'll rotate and flip the bottom one and adjust the shape controls a bit so that they don't overlap as much. Now I can bind the lip geometry and I'll bind the top lip separate from the bottom lip. I want to keep the edges together at the corner of the mouth, so I'll make the lower lip corner control a child of the upper lip corner control. This way the corners will move together, but I can still adjust the bottom control. I prefer having separated lip geometry for this character, leaving the responsibility to the animator to keep the lips connected at the corner. The inside of the mouth is built so that the rows line up with the rows of the lips. It ends with a triangular polygon at the corner of the mouth, and has a couple additional vertices at the opening of the mouth. I can use the existing joints and controls to drive the edges behind the lips, but I need to add two more controls at the open side. I'll bind the inner mouth using all these joints, and now the inner mouth can be posed along with the lip controls. If we look in a perspective view, we can see that the lower lip is slightly behind the upper lip, and the inner mouth is even further back in Z. This space will give us room to add a tongue or teeth, but we also need to make sure that the surfaces don't share the same space, otherwise we'll get rendering artifacts. This mouth shape is almost done, but I just want to do a couple more things before wrapping it up. Since this shape has multiple pieces, then I want to organize it a little bit. First, I'll group the pieces of geometry together and name the group Mouth Open Geo Group. 
Next, I'll group the animation controls and name that group Mouth Open Controls Group. This will make it easier to manage and define in the outliner. The last thing I want to do is sort of automate these inner mouth controls so that they follow the lip controls, making it easier to pose. To do this, I'll use constraints. Constraints are a great way to have objects follow other objects. If I select the NURB circle on the left and shift select the cube, then go to the constraint menu and hit point, then I've set up a point constraint where the cube follows the translation of the circle. The cube doesn't become a child of the circle. It's still separate in the outliner, but it's connected by this constraint node. We can also constrain to multiple objects. I'll start over and set up this constraint again, but this time I'll pick both curves and then shift select the cube. Now the cube is constrained to both curves and we can change the constraint weighting so that it follows one of the controls more than the other. When we set up a point constraint, it takes up the translation channels. So we won't be able to animate the cube's position on this node. But if I add a group node over the cube and set up the constraint there, then the cube is constrained at the group node and I can still animate the translation channels on the cube itself. I always build in this additional node when I set up my constraints because I always want the option to adjust or animate a control while it's constrained. Now I'll build that constraint setup for the open mouth shape. I'll add a group node over the inner mouth controls and snap their pivots to the joints. Then I'll pick the end controls for the top and bottom lip and select the group node for the inner mouth control. Create the point constraint and adjust the constraint weighting. I'll change the bottom weighting to 0.67 towards the bottom lip control and 0.33 towards the top lip control. And I'll do the same for the upper control, but weighted two thirds towards the top lip. Now the constraints automatically keep the inner mouth control groups in between the lips, and I can use the controls beneath the groups to adjust the pose. This constraint setup wasn't necessary because I could just pose the controls, but rigging tricks like this can be useful during animation and can speed up the process. This mouse shape is done, so I can go on to the circular mouse shape. I'll use the same type of animation control and single joint that I've used so far and place it at the top of the mouse shape. Since this is a circle, I'll group the control and snap its pivot to the center of the geometry and then use duplicate with special to create seven more controls using an offset of minus 45 degrees and rotate Z. Now I'll group all the controls under one node and name it and group the geometry and name it too. I'll select the joints and bind the geometry and now this mouth is rigged and can be posed to get the surprise mouth and small W shapes. Now that the mouth shapes are all rigged, I'll set up a main mouth control with visibility channels for each of them. With the main mouth control selected, I'll go to the channel box and select add attribute. And in there, I'll create an attribute for each mouth shape and their controls. Then I'll open the connection editor and link the new attributes on the main mouth control to the corresponding visibility channels on the mouth shapes. Having the animation controls and geometry organized under group nodes and named makes connecting these attributes straightforward. Now these attributes on the main mouth control toggle the visibility of the mouth shapes and their animation controls. I want to key the visibility of the geometry, but I don't want to key the animation controls. So I'll go to the channel control window and move the animation control attributes over to non-keyable displayed. This way I can toggle their visibility, but I won't accidentally key these attributes. I rigged these mouse shapes in a row just to keep them clear for this video, but I needed to line them up and stack them on top of each other. To preserve the zero values on the shape control groups, I'll create a group node over each of them and move that group node to register the shapes. This way the new group node absorbs those translation values. Once I like the position, I'll group it under the main mouth control and lock the channels. Now all the mouth rigs are lined up and under the main mouth control, they can be posed and animated. Before I attach the mouth to the body rig, I just wanted to bring up one more step that can be useful. Since this rig is built flat to camera, then I'm selective about the channels I translate and rotate. I don't want to move or rotate a channel in a way that breaks the flat illusion. So it's helpful to lock all the channels that I don't plan on using to prevent from translating or rotating them by accident. Now I'll import the mouth rig into the file with the body rig. I'll create a group node for the geometry of the mouth shapes and make it a child of the node that says do not touch. Then I'll add a group node over the main mouth control, move that group to position the mouth, make it a child of the character's neck control, and the rig is complete. Here's an animation test to show how these mouse shapes can be animated. Initially, I made this character as simple as possible just to make these rigging videos. But the more I pose him and get a sense of who he is, then the more I like him. And he's a fun rig to animate. I started with the closed mouse shape, then added the mouth corner for the smile, then swapped to the open mouse shape, visually matching the upper lip with the closed mouse shape. For the head turn, I didn't flip the body. I just repositioned the arms and the eyes around, but I did flip the main mouth control. And here I use the end controls of the lips to create a rounded line instead of a corner. 
Then I swap to the circular mouse shape for this section, back to the closed mouse shape, and then back to the open mouse shape. Replacement shapes work really well for a character like this. They're flexible, and it's easy to add new mouse shapes that can have different resolution and their own rigs. Well, this character is now rigged and ready to be animated. I hope you found some of these rigging techniques useful, and stay tuned for more videos.